Another episode of the Successful Driver podcast presented by Aero Truck Sales. We're here in the clear, simple, used truck buying studio. And I'm excited to be talking to one of my friends here at Aero, one of our regional managers, Don Fodiatis. Hello, Kent. It's good to be here. Man, good to be here with everybody. Yeah, you know, he comes in, you know, you come in from time to time. You're not, you know, here stationed in Kansas City. And we figured while you're here, there was no, there was no chance I wasn't talking to you on this show. I'm really excited to be talking with you and and kind of you know hearing about you because you you know you've you've got some you got some you know history here in the industry. So let's just start there. We always try to ask this at, at the beginning. You know, what's your what's your story in the trucking industry? How you got started? How you got to this point where you're at here now? All right. Well, I got into the trucking industry uh, by way of sales. I was originally in construction, the construction industry. And I uh, had relocated to Arizona through a position that my wife had. And in relocating to Arizona, there was little to no construction to speak of. This is back in the uh, late 80s, actually. So I'm dating myself. But <laughs> um, anyway, to kind of fast forward, I went there. There was no construction. I took a job in sales. I actually started with a marine company selling boats. Um, I took to it pretty quickly, liked selling the recreational dream to people and was successful at it. And then we moved back to Southern California. I knew I wanted to continue selling and I wanted to sell something bigger than boats. Hmm. And that's how I got into trucks. <laughs> so what has your career looked like since then, since you, you know, kind of got started roles you've had in this industry, some of the things that you, you know, you've been a part of, you know, since then. Sure. So I started selling trucks with Aero um, in the early to mid 90s, sold trucks for probably three and a half years before I took a sales manager role within the same branch that I worked at for Aero Truck Sales, um, managed sales for about a year. And then uh, the company had aspirations to grow and expand and we were going to open a store and Phoenix, Arizona, and I was ready to take the next step. So I volunteered for that, um, that role and, and was awarded with the position. So I opened the Phoenix branch dealership, Nice. did that for a dozen years, wow. and um, then went into business for myself, left Arrow for a period of time, I went into business with my brother and another partner that ultimately left, and it was my brother and I. We bought and sold trucks for a decade. And um, during that time, I sold a lot of trucks to Aero Truck Sales. We kept the relationships. And Aero started, uh, you know, asking me to come back, trying to woo me back to Aero Truck Sales. <laughs> and anyway, over a period of a couple of years, um, I finally relented and I came back and reassumed a branch manager role. Two years later, I was promoted to a regional role. And here I sit with you today. I just like how you use the word relented, like, oh, they are really pulling my arm to get back here. <laughs> well, there was a lot of freedom, you know, when you work for yourself, but sometimes yeah. freedom is an enemy. Sure. And in this case, you know, the role that I serve today, um, I stay really busy. There's a lot of needs. There's there's 10 branches that, you know, uh, I'm responsible for. And I try to talk to these folks as frequently as possible sometimes about conversations I want to have, sometimes conversations I'd rather not have, you know, tough Comes customers, the territory, those yeah. kinds of things. But yeah. um, anyway, it keeps me very busy. I don't, I'm not in short supply of things to do. So I just had a curiosity, how has Aero changed? I mean, you, you've seen a lot of versions of Aero over the last, I'm not doing the math on that one. I'm not even going to age you Thank there, you. right? Uh, but, you know, you've seen a lot of changes in this place. You know, you've, you've seen a lot of versions of Aero. What has changed between when you started it now? Well, when I started with the company, we were owned by three individuals. So, um, you know, it was an individually run company uh, with a very heavy entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, today, I think that spirit is still there, particularly in the field with our branch managers um, but obviously Volvo having required area, uh, aero, we've taken on a, a more corporate feel and that where there's more structure to what we do. Um, we, we probably pay more attention to customer safety, things that, 
you know, maybe were a little bit lacking uh, prior to that. So all good changes, but changes nonetheless. So I've been in the trucking industry now for almost nine years uh, here at Arrow. And, you know, one thing you notice, and I think you kind of speak on it a little bit too, is, I mean, this is a very, it's a small world, you know, especially, you know, the trucking industry, it kind of seems like there's just, there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of carryover. It seems like in a lot of ways, when it comes to the used truck industry specifically, it's a very small environment, it really is. you know, and uh, it's, it's just an interesting perspective because, you know, we do see, we, we see people, you know, there's, there's a lot of people coming in, coming out when it comes to, you know, how, how, you know, a lot of people wind up back at Arrow. Sure. When it's all said and done and, and you're no different in this situation. Yeah, and here. a lot of the folks that, you know, I meet on a regular basis, rather it be through my travels or on the telephone, um, are folks that previously worked at Arrow. Right. And and probably in many cases, maybe two or three other companies along the way that I'm aware of. So a lot of us continue to cross paths throughout our careers. Once you get in the industry, the industry offers a lot to both, you know, folks that work within it. And those that we serve our customers and uh, those people tend to stay in it for a long time. The thing I noticed is that it's the arrow tree has a lot of branches. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's, a, you know, not just, not just branches, but like literally like our, our spread, you know, the, the people in, you know, in this industry, it's, it's very widespread. There's a lot of, you know, we're, we're having a lot of relationships with a lot of people that just used to be in these walls. And I think that's just so interesting. Very true. You very know, true. it's, it's, it's fascinating. So, um, I like to ask this question to everybody and, you know, you've gotten to work with a lot of truck drivers in, in your career. Um, what do you think makes a successful truck driver? Well, I think the first thing that makes a successful driver is the appreciation for the profession. Mm -hmm. I mean, driving a truck is a profession. Um, I do think there are folks that, you know, get into it as a job, but those that, um, enjoy it, recognize the freedom, want to continue doing it and make a career out of it or profession, mm -hmm. um, then they really kind of appreciate what, you know, the customers on the, or the customers, the cars on the road, what the perception is of them, our customers, you know, these drivers. So um, I think that's the big thing, really appreciation for the career. I think that's great. We don't get that a lot. We don't get that, but there is, you know, there is, there is a respect level you have to have for, for what you're getting into in this industry. And, you know, not everybody can do what these truck drivers are doing and trying to manage all the things that they are trying to ma manage, especially as an owner operator. Yeah. There's a perception from the cars on the highway that these guys are professionals, yeah. you know, they know what they're doing. And, and a lot of times, you know, we, uh, we know there are cars that don't, you know, help our trucking brothers that they make life <laughs> difficult on them on the road. But by and large, I think the cars um, respect, expect that the, you know, the trucker knows what he's doing. I'm going to give him the room because he's going to make the right decision and maybe I'm going to make the wrong one. So uh, that's kind of what I mean about the profession of driving. For sure. For sure. Um, so your role now in the truck driver story, you've had a lot of roles in the trucking industry. Now you're, you know, helping manage, you know, 10 different, you know, branches across the country. You said, you know, how, you know, what, what's your role now, you know, in trying to help truck drivers find success? Well, it's really kind of the same story. You know, I, I got into boats to help sell the recreational dream fun mm -hmm. to people, mm -hmm. if you will. And, and trucking is much the same, only now it's a business. Now it's a livelihood. Um, so when I started selling trucks, that was kind of the approach I took, you know, I wanted to, do what I could to educate, to help educate a driver and, and allow him to put his best foot forward and, and succeed in what can be a very, very rewarding career. Um, now, and, you know, as a regional role and having branches, I think uh, my job is just to help the branches get better at doing that very same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, wh whatever that support looks like at the end of the day, um, these professional drivers are our customers and it's our job to take care of our customers. So mm. um, I don't think much has changed other than the, the role is a little bit different instead of interfacing with them. Now I'm providing more of a support role. No, for sure. And, you know, you're, you're getting to, you know, you're getting to talk to and work, you know, with 10 individual branches. And, you know, I think there's, you know, you, you brought education up. How important is it for, you know, for the guys that you're managing to be, you know, education you know, guys that, you know, kind of have that heart of the teacher, how valuable do you think that is for this trucking industry? Maybe not just necessarily with aero, but just period. Yeah. Well, I think, 
you know, anytime you're dealing with the public, if, if you want to be able to truly play a support role to help, um, to impart knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. you have to learn and you have to share. And you have to be invested and, and believe in, in what you're doing every day to, to become better and make those people around you better. Rather, it's the people working with you, selling the equipment, or the people that you're selling the equipment to, educating them. Knowledge is power. And if we keep it to ourselves, we're, we're not doing anybody any favors. So, Don, what gets you up in the morning to come work here? Uh, really, the people. Um, you know, I do not get to engage with the customers. Uh, with the frequency that I did at one time, but right. I surely enjoy engaging with the people that do. And, uh, you know, the, our branch managers, uh, the folks that run our stores that serve the public are hands down the best in the industry. I would put them up against anybody in terms of character, in terms of ability, in terms of knowledge. Uh, we just, I work with a great people, a group of people and I'm blessed. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I can attest to that. I can vouch for that too. They're Definitely. Um, so, you know, the industry's changed a lot uh, in the last 10 years, the last two years, there's been, you know, a lot of changes that has happened over this decade, even, you know, in the midst of everything we're going through these last couple of years, what have you really noticed about the industry? What have you noticed about the changes in, you know, the truck buyer, the, in the trucking industry as a whole? Well, I probably to answer that would probably go back even a little further. I think, um, you know, the, the trucking industry has evolved like everything, everything evolves. But when I think back to when I first got in the business, a successful trucker um, was a guy that wanted to work hard, probably had a little bit of a mechanical aptitude. You know, he knew how to fix his truck out on the road. Um, it, it was helpful to have that skill set where you could maybe diagnose a problem and per, perhaps prepare it on your own. There wasn't a truck stop at every, you know, mile marker 50 or yeah. however it is today. Um, and then as we've seen technology evolve, trucks have changed nowadays, excuse me, truckers probably aren't doing those same repairs on the side of the road. They're relying on OEMs and, and diagnostic needs to be able to correctly you know, tell you what's wrong with that truck. Uh, they need to be informed. They need to pay attention. They need to try and be students and, and learn more about, you know, what all these sensors and computers do on their truck to keep them on the road and running. And then I also think that today's professional trucker probably has to be a little more savvy businessman than he did back in the day because of those same factors. Yeah. There's a lot to consider, you know, there's um, trucks have a lot more today that can go wrong with them necessitating that you have a money reserve set aside that you, you run your business in a manner that you're prepared for, you know, the rainy day, so to speak. Uh, because they happen more frequently today. Mm, that's, I mean, that's, a. I was going to ask you, you know, what, you know, advice you have for someone looking to buy their first truck. But I think you really did a good job summarizing all of that is just that, you know, th there's, there's more ask, you know, there's more aspects to it than just getting behind the wheel. There's a business side to this now than, than there ever has been. I mean, not that there, there never was, but it's just, there's right. more details, you know, and even some of the laws and regulation changes That's over the last, you know, there's a regulatory side today that right. they didn't have to contend with you know, right. many years ago. So yeah, you, you know, and you spoke to education earlier, you know, these folks need to educate themselves. We can help, we can help to a, a, a limited degree, but I think anybody serious about entering the trucking profession recognize that it's just that it's a profession, it's a career, it's a way to um, really provide for your family. And if you, if you do it with that mindset and you invest in your business, um, you're going to be successful. And I think that's probably what drives all of us at Arrow the the idea that that's what we're selling we're selling that opportunity for for someone to be successful not everybody takes full advantage of it you know there are circumstances that that cause that not to happen that dream not to happen for people but most folks should know that you know that's what we hope to sell them so what do you think the next couple of years looks like in the trucking industry it's it's been a crazy couple of years what do you think the next couple of years look like well, the next couple are probably much like uh, today. You know, we are we are in a uh, supply shortage like never seen before, mm -hmm. at least on the sales side of the industry. Yeah. 
For sure. But obviously, if it's on the sales side, it exists everywhere. And a, and a large part of that is driven by, you know, what, what's gone on with the pandemic and, and uh, you know, part shortages that are now uh, creeping into the used truck side of the business. Our customers that come to us to buy that business and, and uh, you know, they get out on the road for four or five months. They have a problem. They Their truck is down for two months yeah. because they can't get a part. Um, those again are things that people need to be aware of and, and be thinking about. But I think we're going to see a lot of the same, at least for the next year, possibly two, Kent. And then I think if we jump ahead, you know, and start thinking eight, 10 years down the road, well, then we're going to start talking about electric yeah. trucks and, and um, unmanned vehicles and things like that, that is a little bit ahead of me right now. Sure. Well, I, you know what, I think, you know, looking at the next couple of years, one thing we know about this industry is the resiliency of it. And that doesn't just fall on the truck drivers themselves. It falls on the industry in itself. And I think, you know, you're going to start to see some people trying to, you know, find some of these solutions to some of the supply chain issues that we might be seeing when it comes to parts and some of those kind of things. I, I'm excited to see how the industry responses, with, you know, responds with some of the, you know, issues that might be, you know, kind of keeping some trucks from getting, you know, worked on quicker and some of that kind of stuff. I'm excited because I know it's not, it, it starts, you know, it starts with the truckers themselves, but I think this industry in and of itself is going to find some solutions. Yeah. We owe it to them and we're Absolutely. working on it right here at Arrow. Yep. Now we're trying to find ways to, to help out with that type of thing. And, and, you know, I, uh, we're all in it together. Right. And, and so I think again, true to our Arrow family as, as time, you know, I've, as I've learned more, I've shared more and I can attest that I'm sure everybody in the, in a similar role with me at Arrow does the same thing. They continue to learn, they gain knowledge about the industry. We share it with our customers and, um, you know, try to keep everything as harmonious as possible. Don Fodiatis, been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for spending some time with us today. You're very welcome, Ken. Glad that, to be here. Yeah, that's another episode of the Successful Look Driver. To doing it again. Hey, no, I. Anytime you come in, you are welcome. Right. You're on. welcome to come right sit on. down and, and have a conversation. I love talking to you. It's been great. Thank you. That's it for the Successful Driver podcast. Thank you so much for listening, watching, wherever you're consuming this. We'll catch you later.